the scratch line. In the early 1900s, when bare knuckle fights were still common, a line was scratched in the dirt or on the pavement and the two fighters were brought to stand on opposite sides. At a preordained signal, the fight would begin, then the line could be crossed. In gambler's roles, if one of the fighters suffered a knockdown, then there was a break in the action. The man who delivered the blow returned to the scratch line and waited. The fighter who suffered the knockdown had to get up and walk back to the scratch line if he wanted to continue. If he did not come to the scratch line with an agreed upon time frame, the fight was stopped and the man standing at the line was declared the winner. So that's just the uh, opening piece from Standing at the Scratch Line by Guy Johnson. And this is one of the books from Sarah Max Stacks. And I can tell just by looking at this book, I can see the uh, stamp from, this is Grand Rapids Public Library. And so I'm thinking that she probably ordered this from some kind of bookseller uh, or somebody who sold it at a really decent price since it was a discarded library book. So that is um, one of the ways to really find some really good used books. This one is in very good condition and uh, it is in a plastic, the cover is covered in plastic. So it is really in a very nice condition. This book by Guy Johnson is one of the novels that I talk about in my dissertation. And I just remember back in uh, 2011, when the graduation was held at UMass Amherst, my grandmother got on a train and came up from Philadelphia to the graduation. And when she looked in the program, she could see that my dissertation was titled um, Africanizing the Territory, and that it was talking about these um, black town migrations that happened in Oklahoma. And she said, Oklahoma, she said, oh, I'd like to read that. Can you, she said, is it on the, um, on the internet? Can you send me the link? And I was thinking to myself, I'm not going to send the link to my grandmother. I'm going to actually send her a copy. And so I did. I sent her her own bound copy of my dissertation. And the, um, I would say within maybe a year's time, I got a letter from her. And she was talking about how she was making her way through my dissertation. And I was thinking, I only think that the people on my committee, I'm not even sure if all of them read this, but um, she was said she was making her way through it. And, um, and I felt really honored that, that she was. So when she passed away, I asked if I could kind of go through some of her things. I wanted to retrieve this copy. And I was just curious. I wanted to see how far she had gotten. And what I found is that um, she has highlighted, uh, you can see some of the highlighted pages all the way here in, um, in the last chapter. And she actually made some notations of some of the books that she actually owned. If you uh, take a look at some of the titles that are uh, in the work cited, and, um, and then she has a little note here about um, right after my dissertation defense, uh, maybe, uh, well, not right after, but I got an appointment as an assistant professor of English teaching African-American literature at Payne College in Augusta, Georgia. So this is definitely her copy. These are her notations and her highlighting. And then because 
Guy Johnson standing at the scratch line is one of the novels talked about in this dissertation. She actually uh, acquired a copy so that she could uh, take this book in. Just a couple of quick notes about this particular book. This is a part of a two part series. And so I have here from my own collection, this is Echoes of a Dif Distant Summer by Guy Johnson. So this is the first one standing at the scratch line and this is the follow up. And Guy Johnson is somebody that maybe you've heard of him. And if you haven't, you've definitely heard of his mother. Uh, his mother is Maya Angelou. So he was somebody that uh, toured the world, uh, did a lot of uh, interesting things, fought fires in Egypt. And I think he was probably trying to run from the very thing that um, he probably had inside of him all along and got it honestly because he kind of, once he stopped running, churned out these two uh, two volumes. Now let me say about this particular book, when this came out in 1998, this actually became a um, little bit of a book craze. And so there were book circles or book clubs that actually got started by Black men, especially in the Pittsburgh area that wanted to read these. And anybody who's familiar with like spaghetti westerns or uh, just that kind of um, uh, Western genre would enjoy it. And certainly for me, always thinking about how do Black people set up these autonomous, self-determining kinds of communities. And Oklahoma was one of the places that they did that. And if you get a chance to read this, there is a part of the novel that is set in a town called Bodie Wells that seems like it's probably modeled after Bowley, uh, Oklahoma. So that, I just wanted to point that out from Sarah Max Stacks. And then you can also see some of the books by Maya Angelou that she also had in her collection. So. I would imagine that she had these books first and then got the Guy Johnson book based on her trip to my graduation and then reading through the dissertation. But these are some of the really common uh, Maya Angelou books. Here's one of her collected poems. And this is uh, All God's Children Need Traveling Shoes. And so she was definitely one of those people that produced a number of volumes that were about her life, Won't Take Nothing for My Journey. Here is, uh, here are some poems, Shaker, Why Don't You Sing? And then this one, The Heart of a Woman. So these are the Maya Angelou books that uh, Sarah Mack actually had in her collection. And I actually have Heart of a Woman, and I um, have, uh, I know I have the complete uh, collected poems. And so that's something that we had uh, in common, which is another thing where it would have been a really great conversation to have with my grandmother about some of her literary choices, but I'm choosing to have them now. So uh, I hope you enjoyed just this kind of brief introduction to Guy Johnson, and then definitely a reintroduction to his mother, Maya Angelou, and just this way of thinking about if you encounter someone's work and you find that they are discussing some literary works or historical works that you could actually take a look at the uh, works cited or bibliography and start to think about which books do I already own? If you don't own any of them, then as you read through that text, then you may say, okay, I, need, I know I need to get this book. You could develop a list. 
And, uh, and I have to say that some of the things like highlighting or checking off the things that I own that are um, part of a bibliography is definitely something that I would do. So to see that Sarah Mack did it also is um, one of those things that it just kind of feels like a bonding moment. So thank you for listening. I hope you enjoy this um, particular installment of Sarah Mack's Stacks. Thank you.